Well, guys, it looks like I'm I'm live. If if you're in there, pop in, pop a a comment on the comment box below, and I'd be happy to answer them. It is a lovely sunny day here in the southwest of Ireland, around nine degrees, not too bad at all. I uncovered my musha baju, and there's a new leaf coming up, so I should have a new leaf shortly. When I have a new leaf, I will do a video on that, so stay tuned to that. And around the Musia Baju, there's some nice new pups coming of Musia Baju. So I'll do a video of those too. And um, I got my black bamboo, which I'll do a video of. Um, got my monkey puzzle tree, Aracana Aracana. Um, as you can, as you saw that I did a video of that. And the leaves are very prickly on it, as I know myself. When I was taking it out of the pot, I got pricked and my finger bled a bit, so that shows you how sharp they are. I got my Cyitea Australia tree fern as well. Got um, Yucca filifera, and I got my red leaf banana plant, which I will be planting when the weather get warms up a bit more. Um, yeah, and uh, a lot of things are doing well. My ferns are doing well. They have some crozers coming up, so there should be some new leaves coming up shortly. My Cyitea cuperi is getting some new crozers as well. The leaves burnt in the winter, but that's no big deal, as there's some other ones coming up, so it should have a nice crown come summer. Um, yeah, and my Phoenix canaries are doing good. They got a bit burnt for, by the frost, but doing good. My orange tree is doing good. My lemon tree is doing good. My Listonia is doing great, getting a bit a fuller crown. My fuchsias are starting to bloom. Um, yeah. Um, my my wash has got a bit of a battering, but they're coming. They're coming back. I I I have complete hope on them. They they are hardy plants, so they they'll come back. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. They're doing my cat cat I are doing great too. How how are you Tommy? How is the weather doing? Great. To See you in there. Yeah, um, and my Sabbath patterns are doing great. It's good. Um, I got seeds off my humils. It's good. Off my humils volcano. Got a good crop off them. It's good. Um, my other humils are doing great. Um, um, my track capris right now is they're, they're starting to get a third leaf now. So it'd be great to see. That's nice and full, and they're getting taller. The my trichocarpus ragnaris are about three foot tall. My Listonia australis is four feet tall. Uh, se uh, sorry, seven feet tall. It's my tall. It's my tallest palm in my forest. It's even taller than my big Phoenix canary, believe it or not. It's very tall. Like um, yeah, and. Yeah, all of them are doing great, really. Like, um, yeah. Uh, and my tracky carpets for two night are doing great, too. They're doing brilliant. My cycads are starting to come back. My psycho and my other cycad is starting to come back. They should get some nice new flush of leaves in, in this month. Anyway, and I, I will be doing a good view update videos in this month now as it will get, be starting to get warmer so like we got a bit of a cold blast last night but i think that's nothing major we're really out of it really like you know spring has arrived as they say you know and um, it's great great to see see all in there in a way pop a comment on the question box so i'd be happy to answer it yeah um Yes, yeah, so, like my Cyitea Australia's tree fern, I got two trunks of that. So they're, they're nice. The, the Cyitea Australia's tree fern is hardier than the Cyitea cuprite. The Cyitea cuprite can only take minus three Celsius, which the Cyitea Australia's can take minus 10 Celsius. Yes, yes, I'd be doing a lot, a lot of... Um, update videos of 
how my pams put up with the the harsh winter we had this year. Like the winter we had this year was minus six, which is very very rare for the southwest of Ireland. Southwest Ireland is usually usually not always, but usually very mild. It would be a temperate climate. So yeah, um, be doing a video on the black bamboo as well. Um, be doing a video on the Cyatia australis, and I will be doing a video on the yucca filifera. And when I plant my red leaf banana, I'll be doing a video on that too. They're very nice, the very nice um banana plant, but very cold since of so. Once it gets below um even five degrees Celsius, dig it up and put it in. So yeah, the they don't take frost very well. But most of my pans have been doing great. I be I just do an hour in here and then I'll head in anyway. Like so I hope all of your days I do great. Hopefully spring has arrived for ye. I know spring has arrived here, definitely. When I was walking down the road, I saw a few daffodils, tulips and everything and and daisies, which is a sign of spring. So yeah. And my other mousse as you should cook start coming back soon and my pink banana should start coming back soon so yeah with with Ms. Major Bijou like it it pulls off some um a few pups like it's a bit it's a bit like bamboo it spreads the Major Bijou spreads so you could have a couple of bamboo in the one place then another couple of bamboo in the, another place um, Musha Baju, I mean, in another place. So they're, they're lovely. And they have a lovely um, exotic tropical leaves. Yeah, and the Musha Baju banana plant, they're a fiber banana, so they're not edible. They, they'd be used for um, material like cloths and that. That's what they're used for. But the thing people get confused about Musha Baju. There is two musha juice. There's fiber musha baju, and there there is catfish musha baju, which is the edible one you get in the supermarkets. Is the cabbage one, but the fiber one you cannot eat. If you ate it, you would be sick for months. So the the fiber one is really just for materials, and that the the fiber one is nice to have in the garden to get to make a nice exotic look. They love loads of water anyway. So you can never let them dry out. When the soil feels dry, you, you water it. And what I do with my music as you, once a, a week, I fertilize them just to give them a bit of a boost. But they, they do good, yeah. The music as you do good. Like. Banana plants are very easy to grow. Once you know how to grow them and you know which one to grow, the Musha Baju is the most cold tolerant banana. So I would suggest that for anyone who wants to start out growing um, a tropical but well a, a banana plant, Musha Baju get a Musha Baju. They are very cold tolerant. If you think there is a bit going to be like a minus six freeze. Bubble wrap the trunk. You don't need to cover the leaves. Just bubble wrap the trunk and it'll do fine. I'm doing good, Jason. How are all your pams doing in Alberta, Canada? I hope you have them covered because I know it's a bit cold at the moment there. But here, spring has started. Um. Yeah. Uh, have you tried some Musha Baju bananas? They're very nice exotic look. And they are very cold tolerant, so you should get away with them in Alberta, I think. I'm not sure. Oh, they're inside. Oh, yeah. No. Make sure they're getting enough water inside anyway. Don't let them dry out. They, they love water, and, and they are heavy feeders as well. Just to be aware of that. Like, I have a few Musha Bajus in my garden. They die down in the winter, 
and then they come up. Well, that's that's good. Uh, th those plants are very nice. I've heard. I don't have them myself, but they're good. Like the the bananas I have is Muja Baju. I have a cabbage one. I have Muja Balatina, which is the pink one. Um, yeah, that's and Esther Vista, whatever the name, the um, red leaf banana is. It's very tropical banana plant. It does not take to frost very well. So once it gets below five degrees Celsius, dig it up and put it in somewhere warm. As if you leave it out during the winter, it will die and it won't come back. That's the one banana that doesn't come back is the red leaf one. So like Musha Baju will die down and come back. Cabbage will die down and come back. No problem. So yeah. And all, all my tricarpus palms are doing well. My washi tones are coming back from their, their battering. Yes, the Musha Baju um, fiber banana is not edible, Tommy. It's used for fabrics and that. So, but there's two Musha Bajus. So, it might be sold in Musha Baju, but you wouldn't know which which Musha it is. Like, there's Musha Baju cabbage, a banana plant, and then there's a Musha Baju fiber, which is the non edible one. So, you don't know until they. They produce some flour on them. Um, the the fiber ones are way smaller than the edible ones. So yeah. So the 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 Muja Baju are worth trying, and they give and they give a nice exotic look to your, your garden. I know a lot of people in Canada have Muja Baju, and they do fine in the cold. They're very cold tolerant. Yeah, um, and Listonia Australia is a very cold tolerant. I have had my seven foot Listonia Australia's all winter uncovered in in southwest of Ireland and not but a bit of damage, only wind damage, but not frost damage at all. So that 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 is that is good. Um, yeah, um, and my Dixonia Antarctica tree ferns did well during the winter, they do they did fine. They're putting up new crozers now, which is good. I'll be doing the update on my ferns in a couple of weeks' time when they, they start to give out new new leaves and they'll they look fuller and they're just beautiful. Tree ferns are the oldest tree on earth. Just to let you guys know. They 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 were long back the time of the dinosaur ages. And so were monkey puzzle trees. They were, they were back in the dinosaurs and they're very prickly. They were, the, the reason they're prickly is because to prevent dinosaurs from eating their branches. So it's a kind of a little bit of a protection for them. Oh, that's good, Jason. There's a little chick. That, 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 that's good. Yeah, so the monkey puzzle and tree ferns are the oldest tree on earth. They were back down in the dinosaur ages. So that's a bit of a, a history fact for you. And what's so fascinating about uh, a tree fern is it's not made of wood. It's made entirely out of roots. It's, the whole trunk itself is made of roots and they love loads of water. So yeah. Like you know, with palms, they're made of wood. Ferns are not. You get, get all types of ferns. The Xonic Tartica gets Cited Cuprae, Cited Australis, Dixonia Squirosa, Dixonia Fibrosa, and Dixonia um, Swan Rosa. You, you have Cited Murali, um, Cited Della Belta. Um, yeah, all sort types of ferns you have. And um, the ferns don't produce seeds the same way as palms do. They they produce them by the under the under leaves. They have spores and they just fly off in the wind. Like they don't they don't need the same species to produce 
another plant. You can just have one in the garden, it will it will spur a thousands of them in your garden. So that's it's a very interesting difference. Like they don't need another mother plant to do that for them. They can do it on their own. Like and ferns don't flower. They're a non-flower plant. So that's, that's a bit of history in a way. Um, yeah. So my garden is looking fairly good at the moment. They look even better during March and stuff. I hope all your plants are doing great. So yeah, my fuchsias are starting to bloom and um, everything like that. Um, yeah, and there's a lot of flowers coming up. Everything is budding. My cherry tree is budding. Um, my my orange tree is doing great. So I, I hope to get some more oranges up that this year and some lemons up my lemon tree as well. And my apple tree is doing good too. I have an apple tree as well. So yeah. And my wall and my pine is doing very well. It's a very rare pine. Not many of them are around. They are a protected species, so so like if someone want, wanted to cut down my walnut pine, they wouldn't be able to, because it's a protected species. They were found in the Blue Mountains in Australia. They were they were said to be extinct for two billion years ago until someone found them in a remote part of the Blue Mountain in one of my park so i'm uh, i'm lucky to have the walmy pine very rare very rare species i have a lot of rare, rare things in my garden i love collecting rare species it's the whole joy about it so yeah i hope all your days are doing good hopefully the weather is behaving itself yeah, so I'll I go for half an hour on this, and then I'll wrap it up. We're great to see see you in there. If you have any questions at all, pop in the the comment box. I won't bite. I'll try to answer them as best as, as I can. Yeah, um, I I will have a few ceilings this spring when my track carpets, fortuny seeds sprout um washingtonia seeds phoenix canary seeds foxtail and bismarckia noble silver um yeah and and some lipstick pants as well so i will do a video on them when they sprout so stay tuned to that we're doing a lot of updates in this month now it'll be very exciting so yeah. So and you with the musha as you you would you get the bananas from them in four years time. So mine will produce them in three years time. It's bit it has a bit of height on it and it will get even taller this year. So yeah. So anyone who's starting out on bananas, try Musha Baju. It is the most cold tolerant one. And see how you get on. That's the one I would suggest you to start with. Musha Baju. Because some of the other banana types are more difficult to try out when you're starting out. So try Musha Baju. You you succeed with that one like and when if there's a cold temperature that um the musha can't handle bubble wrap it it bubble wrap the chump chunk in bubble wrap and it'll do fine don't no need to cover the leaves the leaves are fairly hard enough even if it died down don't don't worry new leaves will sprout in the spring my my musha as you leaves die down and i uncovered and a couple each time I saw a new growth come in, so there'll be a new leaf on that, and I'll do a video on the Musha Baju. I'll do a video, and I, I will do, I go in-depth in the video as well, 
and I will show you how to care for the Musa Baju and what its requirements is and I will I will put in the the call tolerance of it as well and and stuff like that and um, more or less gonna like how to care for it as well so so that you get idea of what you need to do to keep it alive Washingtonia filipera is very fast growing. I I I hear that they grow three feet in one year, so it will be four feet per year. But in your climate, Jason, it will be a bit slower growing because you're a bit colder than where the filipera would be like. Like in my climate, it would be slow, but not as slow as in your climate. Like Washington and Philip Ava, they they will be in climates like the Canary Islands, like Lanzarote and Tenerife and all of those, and in California, they will be in California and, and stuff, and in Florida, all those kind of hot places. They are a desert pan, so they don't need much more, and they need to be kept dry. And they are cold hardy down to minus seven Celsius. So yeah, it all depends on the type of climate. But just, I, I mean, um, in the winter time, you get fairly cold, like you get minus 15, which uh, Washington it wouldn't handle. They can, they're cold hardy down to minus seven Celsius. It's the winter temperatures you want to watch. In the winter, you want to cover the Washingtonia up with, if your climate is freezing cold. I mean, like minus 15, a Washingtonia wouldn't survive that uncovered. Like in, in Southwest Ireland, we can get away with them in winter not covering them. As long as we keep them dry, and they'll grow way fine. So, it's the winter temperatures you want to watch. Like they, they, they might do fine in the in the spring and summer months, but winter the winter months would actually kill it if it was minus fifteen or that way. They they are only cold hardy to minus seven. So like yeah, so you want to box them in or cover them with a fleece. Or even put some artificial heat lights on them. Because like un uncovered without anything, they they will die in minus fifteen. As as I I did the research and it it's only says it's hardy down to minus seven Celsius. They are a desert pam and they need heat. So yeah, it's a bit like the Bismarck. Yeah. They, they need a bit of heat and they're only cold hardy down to a certain amount. So you really have to do your research when you, you are going to try a different pan. You're going to zone push, push a, a pan. Like when I'm zone pushing my pans, I I research of what the requirements are, and I try to mimic that. So you kind of want to know where they come from and how you can try to mimic that so they they survive in your location. So yeah. So I'll be just going for an, another half an hour, and I'll wrap it up then, like. Hope everybody's enjoying the live stream and keep the questions coming. I'll try to answer them as best as I can do. I know, I, as I said, I might know everything, but yeah, my garden is looking pretty decent at the moment. I'm very happy with it. I'm very happy with the weather. The weather is improving each day, which is very good. Not much frost is at all. And when we do get frost, it's very light. So that is good. 
and like it's gone in within seconds really like so the doesn't affect the pounds at all now. I I've, I've lost three pounds this this winter, but not not too bad. Like it was my mistake. I didn't cover them in time. But you learn from your mistakes. So yeah, like so. Later on in the in the summer, I might try might try again a king pound, and in the winter I'll cover it. To make sure it survives. Like. You have to fail. To su succeed. As my motto is. Yeah and. My motto is. Nothing is impossible. If you want to try that pam. Try it. But. Research it for first. And see how you can actually. Achieve that. Without killing it. And if. If it doesn't work. Don't give up on that fam. Try it again. Try it a different way. Like, I, I I spent many different ways on a certain type of pan to get it to survive. Eventually, I got it. So, so like, with me, I'm determined of, to get the results I want. People will say, why are you trying that? It won't survive in your climate. I just don't listen. Because I want, I, I'm just determined of getting the result I want. And I, I know myself, I know my God, I'm going to, I'm going to succeed in that. And I have no problem trying tropical palms. If, if they, um, if they fail, fine. I won't get upset with it. I'll try it a different way. If it fails again. Try it another way. Fails again. Try it another way. And you will eventually get it. So don't give up on your dreams. Is my advice. Like if you want to achieve something with that time in your location. And you want to be the first one to actually succeed with that. Go ahead and do it. Prove people wrong. And that's what I'm doing. I'm proving people wrong. They say to me. Or oh, this won't survive, or that won't survive. And I go, I'm not going to listen. I'm going to, I'm going to see what is in my heart and can I do it. And if my heart says I can do it, I'll do it. I don't care, bro. They might. I will take their advice, no problem. But I won't listen to them if they say, "Oh, don't try that. Don't waste your money." No, I won't. But I'll take their advice, but. I will try it for myself. Try it for yourself. You don't know unless you try it for yourself. People can say this and that. It won't survive. Don't waste your money on it. Don't bother planting it. Plant it and try find out for yourself. And you will eventually um, will get the whole gist of what you can actually grow in your area. When you try different things, with a reason, like you have to keep to your budget as well, like so. So I hope that advice is good, good advice for you. I hope you take something from that. Yeah, like as I am, I'm still learning about the pams and ferns and things. You always can, you always can. Learn something each day, like, and like, Pam's is a hobby for me, and I, I, I love doing the hobby, and I, I, I love the failures and success with it. Like, I'm not too pushy if something fails, as I know I will have plenty of success in the garden. You, you're going to have to accept the failures as well, but. That's the whole, the whole joy about the the hobby is you're gonna have failures and success, and when you have success, you will be thrilled about it. But there will also be failures as well. But sure, and like you know, you don't know what the next winter will throw at. So that's why you have failures because the, 
the winter it could be harsh and then the next winter it could be mild it could be harsh again and then mild it's as I say, say it's a it's a roller coaster of where you want to get so yeah um mutual bajus are fair, fairly good you're kind of going to have a joy with them like and my my cacti are doing very good. Like I have them in gravel and everything, and they're doing great. I have prickly pear, and I have some succulents as well, which they're growing great. They've actually gotten bigger since I planted them in, so that is that's that's a good sign. Anyway, yeah. So yeah, if you have any questions of what of any type of plant. Pam or pl plants, please pop, the, please pop them in, and I'll answer them for you. No problem. And I, I have a, I am, I'm trying a eucalyptus blue gum at the moment, which is going well. Yeah, eucalyptus gives a bit of canopy and everything like that. So, yeah, I know for a lot of places this year winter has been extremely harsh. I know, like Texas is only recovering from their big freeze with the snow and I think there's still a lot of places in the US is still getting heaps of snow we were lucky we got no snow we got, got only a, a, a feathering of snow and that was it nothing really it just melted straight away but I know a lot of places weren't as lucky as us they got good few feet of snow which is it's the free the freeze that they got would kill any Pam. It would kill any Pam. They were just very, very unlucky this year. Like see that's the whole thing about it. You can be unlucky and then you can be lucky. And Madrid got a big freeze as well. They got a heap of snow. And I hope their Pam survived. Yeah, but like uh, like their phoenix in that and I know they have a few foxtails in that hopefully they survived because like the 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 freeze that they got would be good enough to actually to kill some of them but hopefully they, they got lucky hopefully they, they did and I hope Texas is doing good at their the Pams will recover, hopefully. My, I'm, I hope they do survive. Like I'd be touching my Texas friend. Like a, a lot of he, all of his Pams died except for his Bismarckia, which was surprising. I thought the Bismarckia would be first to go, but no. Like all of the more cold tournaments actually went before the Bismarck. So yeah, it shows you Bismarck is it, it is cold hardy. Hardier than you think really. Mine got a bit burnt but it's 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 starting to become we got we've got some heat back so it should start to get its colour back in again. So that that that'd be good. So I will go for um, around maybe 15 minutes or so and then i'll pack it in i hope you got some nice interesting information from me today and hope you enjoyed my live stream please give me some feedback on it after this live stream i really appreciate it and let me know what i can improve on as well because like i i don't know if there's any errors here so it'd be good to know that as well. So I can improve that the next time I do a live stream. That'd be really good. And it's great to see you on all in there. Thanks, Jason, for be, being there as well. And I hope all your PAMs are doing well. Please, please send, me, send some photos on my, uh, on my PAM group, Exotic. Pam Lovers Ireland, love to see them. Yeah, I know you grow a few windmill pams, and hopefully they will they survived as well. So yeah.
Okay, I'm going to pack it in and I will see you next time. Bye.